Hey scientists, let's talk about ch 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 changes. Have you ever noticed that sometimes when you change things, you can change it back, but other times you can't, and it's stuck like that forever? This morning, I decided to make myself some breakfast before leaving the house. I got out a frozen smoothie from the freezer and set it on the counter to melt. And then I got out a piece of bread and put it in the toaster. Right as I was about to eat, I realized I was late and didn't have time to eat after all. I threw my smoothie back into the freezer, but I couldn't figure out how to undo toasting my bread to put it back up. That's because you can't. Sometimes if you make a change, it's permanent. Why is that? Well, let's take a look. There are two different types of changes, physical changes and chemical changes. Physical changes are what happens when something's appearance changes, but the composition stays the same. While a chemical change is when something's composition changes and something new is made. I know, I know, you're probably like, okay, but what does that mean? The easiest way to think about it is to ask yourself two questions. Can I undo this? And was something completely new made? When you look at a physical change, they can all be reversed or undone. When you look at a chemical change, something new is always made and it can't be reversed. First, let's focus on the changing states of matter. Say you have a liquid. It could be water, but that's boring. I want to talk about soda. We all know from previous lessons and life experiences that this liquid deliciousness can be frozen. Nothing is as tasty as eating a frozen soda on a hot summer day. We also know that if you leave the frozen soda out for too long, it just melts and goes back to its original liquid state. That's how all states of matter are. Solids, liquids, and gases are really easy to change back and forth. All you have to do is change the temperature. So if you have a liquid that's boiling and turning into liquid water vapor, ask yourself, can I undo this? Yes, if you put a cold bowl over the boiling water to catch the steam, the vapor will decrease the temperature and change states back to liquid water. Other physical changes include both mixtures and solution. Let's take a mixture of iron filings and sand. Can I undo this? Yes, really easily in fact. I just have to pass a magnet over my mixture and it'll pull all of the iron filings out for me. So this is a physical change. If I zoom into my molecules and atoms, I can see that even though I mix the sand and iron, they're still the same on a molecular level and haven't changed their composition. What about solutions? Let's take some water and add in some poppin' pink lemonade. When I look at this solution on the counter, I can see that it didn't change color from the original pink powder. I didn't make something new, and if we look at the molecules, I can see that the water and lemonade haven't changed composition. But can it be undone? Yup. If I boiled the solution long enough, the water would evaporate and leave me with the poppin' pink powder in the bottom of the cup. Let's look at a chemical change. Remember, I won't be able to undo any of my chemical changes, and whatever we're looking at will undergo a change in composition, meaning something new will be made. This could be a change in color, a releasing of smoke, or making a new compound. The easiest example of a chemical change is burning. Burning anything always results in a chemical change. Let's burn some matches. The matches release smoke, which is a new substance. Can we undo this change? Nope. Almost all baking falls under chemical changes as well, from baking chicken to cookies and from pies to potatoes. Let's take a look at some cookies first. To make cookies, you add sugar, flour, eggs, butter, and chocolate chips and mix it into a big sticky mixture. Remember that up until this point, this is a physical change because I could undo this. But something happens when you put that yummy cookie dough into the oven. Let's take a look at the molecules. My sugar is changing into caramel, which is a new substance. All of the bonds are breaking due to heat and making two new sugars, glucose and fructose. The same thing happens to the proteins in my eggs and butter. If we bite into the cookie once they've come out of the oven, they taste different and have changed colors. This is a chemical change. Any type of chemical reaction is also a chemical change. But something chemical and physical changes have in common is that mass is always conserved. That means the amount of mass is always going to be the same at the beginning 
and the end of my change. If we combine two substances, all we have to do is add their two weights to find the weight of our end product. This would be like if I added 500 grams of rice cereal and 300 grams of marshmallows, I could expect to make 800 grams of Rice Krispie Treats. 